Dr. Caroline Leaf and welcome to this first episode of my new show, The Dr. Leaf Show. If you haven't yet subscribed, just press the little subscribe button and you'll be notified when new shows are out and you'll be kept updated on all things related to the mind and mental health. In this show, I'm going to be giving you tips and tools on how to use your mind to overcome mental ill health and chaotic mindsets and how to lead a fulfilled life. Many years ago when I, was, when I started my clinical practice, I was really diving into this concept of can the mind change the brain and is the mind separate from the brain. I instinctively realized, like all of us do, that your mind is powerful and that how you're thinking is definitely impacting how you function. However, I was trained to, to be, I was literally trained that the brain couldn't change and that we had to teach our patients to compensate instead of to restore the original function or even improve their function. But this really just, I battled. I battled with this concept and I started re really researching this very, very early on in my career. And then I had a patient one day that approached me or her parents approached me and they heard about this work that I was doing with how the mind is separate from the brain and how the mind can change the brain. And they contacted me and they said that their daughter had had a really bad car accident. She had literally been thrown quite a few feet from her car. She'd been in a coma for, two, for nearly two weeks. And at that point in time, for someone to have been in a coma for that long, the brain damage was considered to be irreversible. So her parents had been told. But these parents were not giving up. They, they pretty much had been told, well, that's it. The status that she had achieved was, was pretty much that was it. And they, didn't, they did, just couldn't agree with that. They just couldn't accept that. And they heard that I was doing research on the mind changing the brain. They contacted me. We had a meeting. And they said, please, will I work with her? And I was very, very reluctant at first because I said to them, you know, my research is in its early stages. You know, I'm really trying to, I'm going against the grain because I was trained that the mind couldn't change, the brain, and that the brain couldn't change. And no matter what you did with your mind, you just had to, with, with any kind of brain damage or any kind of brain issue, you just had to kind of live with it and, and teach compensation. And they said, no, but we, we really believe there's more. And they gave me so much courage after a long discussion. I said, okay, well, understand that this is going to be experimental and I can't guarantee anything. Well, I can tell you, not only was my mind blown in a very good sense, but so was that patient that I worked with and her parents and her family and thousands of people since have benefited from this initial research that I did. This young girl had had this, as I mentioned, had had a car accident, had been in a coma for over two weeks and had been, had a natural, when she did come out of her coma, she'd had a natural um, recovery that she'd gone through. So what happens is, is that when your brain goes through a traumatic, any kind of traumatic brain injury, there's a window of time where your brain spontaneously recovers and then it hits kind of a ceiling. And that happens within about eight to 12 months of having a brain injury. Now this young girl, was when she went when she was in her coma, she was told by her parents that she'd be a vegetable, and literally that's what the doctors told her. And the parents did not give up. They really spoke over her life, and they kept stimulating her and reading to her. So already her environment was very positive, very hopeful, and I saw that as a very very important factor in her healing that the people that surround you, the people that are around you in your life, when they reach out in love and they encourage you and they believe in you, that's a huge part of giving you the courage to heal. This young girl, when she did come, come around, one of the things that she told her mom and dad and her family was that I heard you when I was in that coma, not every time, but I heard you. And I heard you telling the doctors to stop, stop speaking negative over me. I heard you playing that music. I heard you bringing my friends in. And she said it gave me the desire to change and to grow and, to, and, and, and she had hope. And this is a very important part that I have seen in my years of giving therapy. I ran a clinical practice for 25 years and in the years of research that I've done, which is nearly 30 years now, and in the thousands, actually hundreds of thousands, close to a few million now that we reach through my global outreach through TV and various conferences, where when you give hope to people, when people realize the power of the human mind to change circumstances, to influence how you function on a physical level, how you can get away from those labels that have locked you in, that you can get away from what science is telling you, because science is always a little bit, you know, science is, is always progressing. So science is not always 100% accurate, because as we get more science, we have to make changes. So we have to live in a state of hope. 
and in a state of hope we get the courage to persevere. And this is what I saw with this young girl. She had hope built into her by a loving surrounding family. And then as she chose to hang on to that hope, she came out of her coma and she started pushing through. Now here's where the incredible miracle begins, or continues I should say, is when I started working with her, she was already eight months post accident. She, at the time of her accident, was 16. She was going into her, her he was, she was in her second last year of school and she was going into her, preparing to go into her last year of school. And she had lost a whole, almost a whole year of school by the time I met with her. So her peer group were in their final year of school. She was battling to even cope on a second grade level. So here's this young girl who's now totally frustrated, come through so much, grown so much, but she's still sitting at this point where she was on more or less a second grade level and she was absolutely determined to get back to her peer group level of 12th grade. So this was a big challenge. I didn't even know where it would go. And this is becoming a long story, but I want to tell you that this is a story worth listening to because this young girl sat down with me for three hours every week and then daily for hours, working on her own, working with her family, applying the techniques that I had developed on the mind, which I'm going to be sharing with you in this, in this, in this show. And in my, I've got lots of books and DVDs and online programs to help you. And these, the things that I have written about and the books and the, and the online programs and DVDs are based on this, my, my research showing this young girl and many, many other patients how to use their mind to change their brain. So we started learning these techniques, started teaching them to her. And within another eight months, not only had this young girl caught up with her peer group, but she went on to finish school and she actually did better with the so-called brain damage that she'd had from the traumatic brain injury than she did prior to the accident. So prior to the accident, her intellectual level was at one level and her IQ was very average. And even though IQs only tell you part of the story, her IQ was average. After the accident, after this mind training, her IQ had actually gone up around about 20 points plus. According to the research at that time, and we're looking back in the 80s now, the research on brain injury said that generally your IQ would go down, your brain couldn't change. She defied all those odds. Her brain, her IQ went up and she increased in her cognitive skills, her emotional skills, her academic skills, her psychosocial functioning. On every level, this young girl changed. She was determined, she persevered, she pushed through. There were a lot of emotional things. You can imagine all the emotional things tied into going through the situation, fighting to get back. But all of these over time changed and she persevered. She chose and she persevered. So I've already got a few points that I just want to point out to you. There was a family that created an environment of hope, a loving supportive family. Secondly, there was this desire in her. She chose to push through. She chose, she chose. I can't stress enough the choosing. She pushed through, she persevered, and she, she just didn't give up. This is what I saw subsequently with so many thousands more patients over the years as I worked in various different environments with various different types of situations. People that had gone through terrible traumas, that suffered post-traumatic stress disorder, people that had major learning disabilities, people that were suffering from early stage dementia and advanced dementia, people that had cardiovascular disease and had damage in their brain, people with all kinds of communication issues and emotional issues and learning issues as a result of some, something going on in their life that had affected how their brain was functioning. And it was just astounding for me. I mean, I'm, 30 years later, I'm as excited as I was when I first did this, this research, when I started this research, which is what has encouraged me to carry on doing what I do and why I now write these books and do this TV show, to encourage you that there's, the power of your mind is phenomenal. This is not just some story. This is not just some, some out there ethereal thing. This is reality. Your mind is so powerful. Your mind has this wonderful quantum nature. It is filled with power and energy. And as you control how you think, you change the structure of your brain. You change the physical functioning of your body and that feeds back into your mind and you have this great feedback loop being set up where you realize that no, no odd can not be overcome. I'm not going to say it's going to be easy. Nothing in life is easy. We're all very aware of that. I don't have to tell you that life is tough and life is filled with so many challenges from the traumatic brain injuries that you may or may not have suffered, from the traumas, big and small, that all of us go through and experience, from the challenges of just being in, the, in, this, in this world and being alive 
and just being in a world where you can't control the events and circumstances of your life, but you can control your reactions to the events and circumstances. That's probably very key in what I teach. You can't, life's tough, you can't control the events and circumstances of what happens to you, that car accident, that email, that photograph, that boss, I mean that, that, that situation, that boss, that whatever, all these different things that can happen as we open our eyes in the morning because they are the result of other people's choices. But you can control your reactions. You are designed with a brilliant brain, a brain that is so sophisticated, so powerful, so amazing. But this amazing brain needs something to make it work like it should. And that something is your mind. And your mind is how you uniquely think, how you uniquely feel, and how you uniquely choose. Your thinking, feeling, and choosing will basically produce how you react to the events and circumstances of life. So as you're experiencing life, when you learn to actually focus on and learn to become aware of how you are thinking in the moment, it starts guiding you and helping you to start focusing on what you should be changing in your life. So these, this is a lot of information and we're going to be unpacking this information in the show in various different ways. I'm going to be teaching you techniques. I'm going to be focusing on different concepts each show. I'm going to be talking about things like quantum physics, neuroscience, um, neuropsychology, psychoneuroimmunology, all these big amazing scientific words that that science is showing us that we can use to help us understand the power of the mind to change the brain. I'm going to be showing you how thoughts build, how you build them in your brain, how you can change those thoughts as you are thinking and feeling and choosing, how you can design the structure of your brain. Literally, you are creating matter out of mind every moment of every day. You are creating your realities. You have the power to create any of your own realities. In fact, you are creating a reality at this moment. You design the next moment of your life by your reactions. And this is such a lot of confirmed science. Daily science is pouring out with articles and research studies showing that thoughts are real things, that thoughts occupy mental real estates, that we build these thoughts and the design of these thoughts are basically controlled by your reactions. What you are thinking, feeling and choosing will design your thoughts. So a fundamental principle in what I'm going to be teaching on these shows is the fact that you design your thoughts and you build your thoughts. You, with your mind, your powerful quantum mind, will influence how your genes express. And when your genes express, you make amino acids. And when those amino acids group together, you make proteins and you make all the things necessary for life, for you to be living and to be functional in every single one of the cells of your body including the thoughts that you build. You build thoughts in your brain with your mind, with you, which then stimulates this genetic expression. And these thoughts look like trees. And these thoughts that you build are the root of what you say and what you do. So as you react to life, you generate quantum energy, you build thoughts, and then you act from those thoughts. So if you've wired them in, the wonderful news is that you can wire them out. There's so many applications here, overcoming the past, dealing with trauma, dealing with the daily events, lifestyle changes, learning how to learn. Not only is your brain designed for you to basically build your realities into it, but your brain is also designed to learn, to increase your intellect, to prevent future dementias, to keep building your, your cognitive integrity, to keep your intellect at the gr flourishing, growing levels that it should to keep your emotions under control. All of this is in your hands, in your mind. Your mind is literally the switch that switches on your brain. You know, for many years in South Africa, which is where I come from, I spent close to 25 years not only running a private practice, working with people in my private practice with all kinds of dis disabilities, as I mentioned, but I also used to go out into the field and work sometimes three days, up to three days a week in some of the most poorly performing areas in South Africa. People that were starving, people that were abused, people that were living with an AIDS, in AIDS and sick and raped and, and traumatized and, and in such terrible poverty conditions that you can actually believe ter terrible racism existed at that time in the apartheid era. Not that racism's gone away, but that it's, it, it was really, really bad in that particular time frame that I worked in. And I would go into these townships, which are areas in South Africa where they used to put, put basically put black people in to live, and, and it was a terrible situation. And that's where I would spend most of my days working with people that had been so traumatized. 
and people that, and I'd go into the schools and I would work with teachers and I would work with students and I would work with leaders in the, and, and people in, um, that, in, the, in the communities, helping them to understand how to think, how to change how they think, how to build their brain, how to learn, how to detox. And I would go in day after day into the most dangerous areas of South Africa. And I say that to say that I'm still alive and most people didn't come out of there, especially if you were white, came out of there alive which says something for the message that I bring, brought. The message that I brought was one of hope, that you are powerful, that you're a unique, brilliant, wonderful, incredible human being with such a phenomenal mind that there isn't anything that you can't overcome if you choose to put your choices behind your desires and push through. When you are motivated, when you choose to persevere, when you choose to recognize the power of your mind, those mountains will be, will be overcome. Those things in your life will change. And boy, did they, these people work hard. I, sometimes these kids would sit and these adults would sit listening to me for five, six, seven, eight hours at a time. And so many of them hadn't eaten. The odds that they had to overcome were so extreme. Yet I saw change. Those school grades, they went, they, they, their grades went up. The, their lifestyles changed. Their communities changed. So what started in a schoolroom penetrated into the community where communities were transformed. I would go to a school for three to five hours or six hours or ten hours, sometimes two days, and I wouldn't be able to get back there very often because there were so many schools and so many areas and so many many community centers I needed to go to. But I would hear how that community had changed. And what really excited me at the, at the end of one year where we had reached 300,000 people through these projects, we, when they, every year in South Africa they analyze the top performing schools, and those are schools that have done really well academically. For never ever had that group of schools that I had worked with ever had they reached anywhere near being in the recognized status. So, and, but in that particular year, three of those schools got recognized as having high academic, um, high academic status. They had achieved such high academic scores that they were recognized by our then education minister. I mean, that says something. When these kids, honestly, if I tell you this, this story, you'll be amazed. These kids would sit a hundred in a classroom squashed into a tiny classroom and they would have one textbook amongst a hundred children. They were old chalkboards. I used to have to work with these old black chalkboards with little broken pieces of chalk and try and teach them how to learn, how to think, how to deal with their emotions with a little chalkboard. These teachers didn't have, weren't able to give these children textbooks because they didn't have them. So they would write out the, the contents of the textbooks onto newsprint and stick it up around the wall. And they would teach children like this. If those are the schools, in those extreme challenging circumstances, they would change. This is something that is totally within your grasp. I, I, I'm going, on this show, I'm going to be sharing many incredible stories of the patients and the people that I've had the privilege of working with and connecting with. And I also want to hear your stories. So this show is not just about my stories of my practice and my experience. I'm going to be sharing those and I'm going to be teaching you things and sharing with you. But I'm also going to bring on some of my very dear friends and top professionals in this field, incredible doctors, various different doctors, neurologists, neurosurgeons, endocrinologists, OBGYNs, psychiatrists, people that are really wanting to make a difference. And these people are going to be going to have discussions that will help you to understand the power of your mind to overcome issues in your brain and issues in your life. We're also going to bring real life stories, people with real life stories, and we're going to be hearing these stories and we're going to be talking through, almost in a therapy type context, how to overcome those issues. At the end of the day, I want to tell you that you can change. Your mind is so powerful. There is nothing that you cannot achieve with your brain. So let me end this show with a story. One day when I was teaching in these areas in South Africa, a young girl crept into the classroom. The story always breaks my heart when I share it. And she crept into the classroom and she was bleeding. So we first thought it was her menstrual cycle, but it wasn't. And the teachers pulled her aside and took her out the room for a moment. And it turned out that this young girl had been raped. On the way to coming to here, Dr. Leaf, the switch on your brain lady, this is what they called me out there, she had been raped. And this was a common occurrence in those areas where I worked. Terribly frightening, dangerous areas. But she still got to school and she didn't want to leave because I was there. This is the determination in this young girl. So we put a blanket around her and she sat next to me as I was teaching and she spent that five hours sitting next to me. And that really showed me that there is nothing that you cannot overcome. When you put your mind behind it, you can use your mind to overcome any issue in your life and you can live a fulfilled life. And please let me say this, not only is it about you living a fulfilled life, it is about you living a fulfilled life so that you can touch other people. 
because at the end of the day, we're entangled in each other's lives and we're required to make a difference in our community. It's not just about me, myself and I, that's toxic. It's about you getting yourself right and recognizing the power of your mind so that you can reach out and you can change your community. You can do this. You can use your mind to change your brain. Thank you for joining me today. I'm Dr. Caroline Leaf.